Okay, so this video is more a proof of concept than an actual topics video. Um, I wanna get feedback from you guys about uh, the format of this. Uh, leave it in the comments, or if you're one of my students, you're free to email me. Um, this is, again, not a topics video. This was a question that I received. I'm gonna post an actual video for this after I get the feedback from you guys about how I should format these or whether or not this is a good way to do it. Um, okay, so the question that I received from a few students was about derivatives uh, as matrix transformations. So uh, the take-home exam uh, that I gave last week had a question about um, a derivative, a transformation from PN to PN, that's polynomial space, PN, um, and trying to realize that as a linear transformation, then associating it to a matrix transformation from RN plus 1 to RN plus 1. Um, and so there was a lot to do here. Uh, I want to start maybe just by looking at, um, at polynomial space and seeing uh, that it is a linear transformation. By the end of this video, you should be able to do this for general PN to PN, showing that the derivative is a linear transformation, um, and also be able to interpret the derivative in terms of a matrix transformation from Rn plus 1 to Rn plus 1. Okay, and so the first thing that I want to do is look at this transformation D from P3 to P3. Um, I'm going to do P3 to P3. The proof that I give that this thing is linear generalizes. Um, it actually will have nothing to do with even polynomials, let alone their degree. Um, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, so D is going to be the transformation that sends P to its derivative. Uh, that means by the power rule that this cubic is going to be sent to A1, 2A2, uh, T plus 3A3, T squared. So it's just the normal derivative, the power rule uh, for polynomials. And I want to show that this is a linear transformation. So in general, if I'm trying to show that something's a linear transformation, I want to show that it splits over sums and that I can factor out constants. That's not anything to do with this particular transformation, just in general. Uh, and so for this transformation, I want to, uh, I want to let P uh, and Q just be polynomials. Let those be in P3. Uh, and C just be a real number, just some scalar. And I want to show that uh, P of P plus Q, or rather D, D of P plus Q, uh, is equal to D of P plus D of Q, uh, and that also D of C times P is C uh, times d of p. So now again, I want to show that this thing splits over sums, and I want to show that I can factor out scalars like c. Uh, and so actually, this proof is just going to use calculus. So uh, d of p plus q, for example, um, that's just d dt, the derivative of p plus q. So remember, these are just polynomials uh, in the variable t. I'm just taking the derivative. So remember from calculus that the derivative splits over uh, sums like this. So this is just d dt of p plus d dt of q. Uh, and so using the definition of this map d, uh, the thing on the left of this sum is uh, d of p, and the right uh, term here is d of q. And so this is just d of p plus d of q. All right, and so that shows that my derivative, my, uh, my map d from p3 to p3, uh, at least splits over sums, and we can do something very similar to show that we can factor scalars out. So d of uh, c times p, for example. Um, again, I'm just looking at this uh, as a derivative, and so this is the derivative of cp. That's uh, c times the derivative of p, because I can factor out scalars from derivatives, just from calculus, uh, and that's c times d of p. And so, again, notice I didn't use anything about these even being polynomials. This is just true for general functions. So if you've got a derivative, there's a transformation from, like, just function space to function space using the derivative, um, it's also linear. Um, I didn't use anything about these being polynomials of degree 3. So this actually generalizes um, to Pn. Uh, so in other words, um, yeah, if I had d from Pn to Pn uh, by derivative... Um, this is also uh, linear. Okay, and so that's nice. Um, in general, if this was some other map, I want to show that it splits over sums and I can factor out scalars. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is talk about the B matrix. Uh, just to remind you what the B matrix is. So if uh, my space V has a basis uh, consisting of elements B1 through Bn, uh, the coordinate map, that's the uh, map that takes an element x in v and maps it to its coordinates with respect to the base b. 
uh, is an isomorphism from V to Rn. So isomorphism between two spaces like V and Rn means they behave exactly the same, right? At least for finite dimensional spaces like this, that means if I add two elements in V, I can add their associated elements in Rn and everything looks the same. Isomorphism means same structure. Um, now, it even goes a little bit farther. If I have a transformation T from V to V, some linear transformation, um, I can construct a matrix transformation from Rn to Rn with a standard matrix that I just get from the, uh, the coordinates of, of elements um, mapped by T. Uh, and so this is very useful because I can associate everything that T is doing with something that a matrix transformation is doing. And so this makes it easier to read off things like kernel and range. Um, so in particular, uh, the B matrix, which I'll denote uh, TB, the coordinates of T with respect to B, uh, is just going to consist of these, um, these vectors as columns of a big matrix. Uh, so the first vector will be uh, TB1, the coordinates of that with respect to B. Uh, the second vector will be the coordinates of uh, TB2 with respect to B. Uh, and the last vector uh, all the way up through the coordinates of TBN with respect to B. Now, um, this is a little bit hard to imagine, so I'm going to try to draw a picture for you. Uh, if I have uh, the space V uh, and the space V, it should all look sort of the same. Uh, down here, I have um, Rn, and over here, I have Rn. And so what my map is doing, my map T takes an element X and sends it through the map to T of X. Uh, and so this is the map T. Uh, now, the TB1 uh, coordinates here uh, and the X coordinates, I'm just using the coordinate map here, um, the coordinates of, of something, here the coordinates of something. Uh, and I guess what I'm trying to do to construct this matrix is to look at what the coordinates are of a point before I send it through the map. So I want to send this to XB, the coordinates of X with respect to B. Uh, and then this other thing I want to send to the coordinates of TX with respect to B. Uh, and so, in other words, I'm looking at it something, uh, what the coordinates are before I send it through and after I send it through, and I can construct a matrix uh, transformation using just uh, basis elements. And so what this ends up being, it induces a map, let's call it S, and S is this map where, uh, where I map S of XB uh, to this matrix TB times uh, the coordinates of XB. So we'll look at this in an example so it's a little bit less confusing, but I think that this uh, bubble diagram maybe makes the picture a little bit easier to understand in that uh, I'm trying to look at T and S as really the same transformation. Um, two points get mapped uh, in the same way on, on Rn and on V. Um, so let's, let's return to our actual example um, where V is P3 uh, and B is the standard basis for P3. Uh, that's 1, T, T squared, and T cubed. Uh, again, I'll let D be the transformation from P3 to P3 that sends P to its derivative, P prime. Uh, and I'll try to find out what is the, uh, the B matrix for this transformation. Uh, and so first things I need to find are uh, D of B1, D of B2, D of B3, and D of B4. Uh, and then I'm going to want to find what are the coordinates of these. So what are the coordinates of D of B1 with respect to B? What are the coordinates of D of B2 with respect to B? Uh, what are the coordinates of DB3 with respect to B? And finally, what are the coordinates of DB4 with respect to B? Um, and so uh, I'll comment on how to do that in a few seconds. Um, what are these things equal to? Well, D of B1 is just going to be D of 1. Uh, the derivative of 1 is 0. Uh, D of B2 will just be D of T. Uh, the derivative of t is 1. Uh, d of b3 is just d of t squared. The derivative of t squared is 2t. And finally, d of b4 is d of t cubed. Again, the derivative of which is 3t squared. So uh, I want to remind you how I find the coordinates for something. Um, if I want to know uh, what the coordinates of one of these things is, uh, just remember that if, um, if, say, p is equal to a0 plus a1t, plus a2t squared plus a3t cubed, uh, then uh, the coordinates of this polynomial, the coordinates of p with respect to v, are going to be a0, a1, a2, 
A3. Literally, uh, the first entry here, the uh, A0 entry, is just the coefficients uh, of the constants. Uh, the second entry is the coefficient of t, the third is the coefficient of a squared, or t squared, and finally, uh, the last uh, entry here is the coefficient of t cubed. Uh, and so when I try to find out what the coordinates of db1, db2, and so on are, uh, I'm really asking what are the coordinates here of 0, for example. Um, the coordinates of 0 are uh, 0 times the constants, uh, and nothing else. So this is just equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, db2 coordinates are, uh, what are the coordinates of 1 with respect to b? And so this is 1, 0, 0, 0, because my constant coefficient is 1, and my coefficients of anything t or greater uh, are 0. Um, my b coordinates of uh, db3 are just the b coordinates of 2t, uh, which are 0, 2, 0, 0, because I have no constant coefficient. The only coefficient I have is of t, and that's 2. Uh, and finally, the, uh, the b coordinates of uh, 3t squared are going to be uh, 0, 0, uh, 3, 0. And so we see, uh, remember, our, our d matrix, our, our b matrix, rather, d, our b matrix is going to be just what are the coordinates of tb1 uh, with respect to b, and so on. Uh, and so this is going to be uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's my first vector. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 3, 0. And so what this is telling me is that D from P3 to P3 looks just like um, this other transformation um, X gets mapped to... Uh, dbx on R4. Uh, okay, uh, and so now what, is this, what does this mean, right? So I have a matrix transformation that is derivatives. I have a matrix transformation um, on R4 that represents these derivatives. Uh, and so my question is, what, is this, uh, what does this imply? So now if I wanted to find kernel and range um, of, of this map D, uh, I could read it off by looking at what the kernel and range are of the matrix transformation and interpreting this back into what this means for P3. Um, of course, for this matrix, for this transformation D from P3 to P3 just by, uh, by derivatives, it might not be too hard to find out what the kernel and range are just looking at D. Um, but if you had a much more complicated transformation, finding a matrix and looking at the kernel and range of that would be much easier. Uh, and so the reason is the following. Um, I want to look at the kernel of this map that I called S. So let's let, again, S be uh, the map from R4 to R4 by um, X gets mapped to uh, DBX. Uh, and so the kernel of F of S is just going to be, um, remember, this is a matrix transformation. The kernel of a matrix transformation is just the null space of uh, its standard matrix. And so this will be just the null space of DB, which is uh, the null space of the matrix uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 3, 0. Uh, and so what is the null space here? I'm looking for solutions to um, to this if I, if I look at... Um, so all the x such that this matrix is consistent. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0. So I look at this augmented matrix, and I want to find all the vectors uh, in, in this augmented matrix what are, that are solutions to this. Um, and so this means then uh, that I guess in particular x1 is free because there's no pivots in that column. Uh, and since 1, x2 has to be 0, that must mean that x2 is 0. Uh, 2, x3 has to be 0, so x3 has to be 0. And finally, x4 has to be 0 as well. And so uh, the null space here is equal to the span of all vectors that look like 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, what does that mean in terms of the derivative? So this is the null space of my matrix. So a couple people made a mistake on the take-home exam that they concluded that the um, that the kernel of D is now 1, 0, 0, 0, but that's not quite true. It's actually the kernel of the matrix transformation that is 1, 0, 0, 0. 
um, I want to reinterpret this in terms of my derivative. So remember, uh, this first coordinate here um, is the coefficient of my constants, uh, and the rest of these are the coefficients of t, uh, the coefficient of t squared, and the coefficient of t cubed, respectively. Uh, and so what this is telling me is that the coefficients of uh, all my powers of t are zero, and so this is just um, this implies that the kernel of uh, d itself is uh, constant functions. So these are all polynomials uh, that have only constant coefficients. Um, now, what about uh, the range? Now, the range is, is easy enough to read off from a matrix transformation as well, because the range of a matrix transformation um, uh, like S is just the column space. So the column space of uh, D, B. And so this is the column space of the matrix, again, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, or rather 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 3, 0. And remember, uh, the column space of a matrix is the span of its pivot columns. Uh, and so I see that I have a pivot column uh, here, uh, here, and here. So in the second, third, and fourth positions. And so this is just going to be then the span of um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 3, 0. Uh, and so I can scale things. This is just the span of uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 3, 0. So what is missing from this span, right? The question about range is, what kinds of things do I not get out of this transformation? So in other words, what things in R4 are not in the image of this transformation? Um, it looks like, actually, um, I can't get anything in the fourth entry here. Uh, and so it turns out that this misses any vector with something in the, in the third entry, or the fourth entry. Uh, and so that means, then, that the range of d um, is anything that doesn't have a coefficient for t cubed, has zero coefficient for t cubed. And so this is um, all polynomials up to degree uh, 2, all quadratics, quadratics, linear functions, and constant functions. Uh, and so that's it. So again, this might not have been hard just to read off from the transformation itself, um, d. Uh, but in some cases, the transformation uh, from arbitrary vector spaces into another vector space are, are really quite complicated. And being able to interpret them in terms of matrix transformations on Rn um, makes our lives much easier uh, because range uh, and kernel are just column and null spaces of the matrix. Thanks for watching, and please, again, uh, leave in the comments how I could have changed this video. I realized that I did make a couple of mistakes. Uh, for example, 0, 0, 3, 0 uh, should be 0, 0, 1, 0. Um, I'll try to clean those up in my next posting of the video, but again, remember this was a proof of concept, not a topics video. Uh, I would really like you guys to email me or leave in the comments suggestions on how I could have changed uh, the formatting of this video. Uh, thanks guys, and I'll see you around.